On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of the August Glossy Edition. And for all of you anglers out there who fish from a center console, we check out an innovative product that will make your ride more comfortable. And our correspondents check in with their latest fishing information, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, July 28th, and the monthly Glossy Magazine is out now. For all you tuna hunters out there, Captain John Raguso has a great read on sight casting in the blue water. And for those who like to target, Scott Doc Muller has a great article on catching these tasty fish in the skinny water. And be sure to check out my article on productive docks and piers around Long Island area. All this and much more in the current Glossy issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Remember, $29.95 gets you 12 Glossy print issues and all the weekly digital content and full access to the website, too. And best of all, you can compete in our Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash contest. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Last week, I had the privilege of attending the Big ICAST show down in Florida that showcases the latest fishing gear and innovations. New Jersey, Delaware managing editor Jim Hutchinson and I will be bringing you each week a video from the show highlighting new products. Be sure to keep an eye out for this. If you are a regular viewer of the weekly video fishing forecast here on YouTube, please leave any comments and questions on YouTube and I will do my best to answer them. YouTube subscriber Gary asked if there is any word on Shinnecock East and Cupsug opening up for 4x4 access. After speaking with the Liber president, he informed me Shinnecock East is fully open and Cupsug is open to the metal fence. He also wanted me to remind the viewers to be aware of the bird zones at Smith Point Beach and that you must stay out of them driving that stretch. Recently, I was walking through a marina and saw something very interesting installed on a center console. Wave Armor has come up with an innovative way to protect you from the elements. Here is Jim Camilleri from Wave Armor with all the details. So one of the issues with center consoles is basically wind and spray protection. Uh, the only aspect you had was canvas. We were looking for another alternative and that's how we came up with this system wind armor. So let me show you how the wind armor system works. It's basically a one button electric actuated system and it works like this. This is the side shield that will give you your wind and spray protection at the touch of a button. So another benefit of wind armor is the clarity, first and foremost. Secondly is the ease of cleanliness. You can use a dry microfiber, any type of window cleaning product. Um, it's UV and scratch protected, um, and it gives you the best clarity in the business. The beauty about wind armor also is it's custom fit and tailored to every make and model specifically for your boat and preference. Now let's head over to the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. We're going to start in the West End where I've been hearing reports of some cobia up to 70 pounds. Those going out and trying have actually been connecting with consistency from Jones to Rockaway Inlet. The fluking in the South Shore bays and even in the ocean picked up a considerable amount in the past week. This is probably due to the large influx of bait along the South Shore. I've heard of good catches from the ocean and bay at Fire Island and throughout bays in Mauritius and Shinnecock. Remember, some of this bait has been quite small, so scaling down your profiles might help get bites. In Montauk, the fluke fishing continues steady with good fishing to the south of the point. A few good fish over t the 10 pound mark have hit the scales during the week. Out this way, bigger profiles and natural baits do have the edge right now. Some bass can still be caught in the rips off the point, but the majority of the stripers have moved east to the Block Island area. On the beaches, it's been mainly sharks for the guys trying for bass and blues, but here's a good question. It looks like this oversized striped bass became a slot fish on the south shore after the tax man took a bite out of it this past weekend while getting reeled in. But the question is, can you keep it or do you have to release it? Let's get the latest update for the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash. No change in the standings this week in the Dreamboat Contest. We did have a notable fluke entry by Bill DaCosta of Massapequa, New York, weighted in at Combs Bait and Tackle. This 11.92 pound beauty places Bill in the third place position for fluke. 
The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. As for the Coastal Kayak competition, there were no new entries, so the standings remain the same. Check this video's description on YouTube for all the details and to be a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine. We are excited to bring back the big show at the Long Island Hilton. This year will be better than ever as now the show will cover surf, inshore, and offshore. So mark your calendar for September 22nd. Now let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen who has the weekend weather outlook. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's uh, check that weekend forecast, see what we got going on. You can always check the favorite apps, websites, weather tools, whatever we got. Uh, you know, this is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. And uh, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Uh, we still got some uh, warm water temps uh, with all that heat and humidity we've had the last several days. You can imagine it's been uh, certainly out there. And we've got a uh, wave heights here for Saturday. It's going to be a little bit lumpy in the morning. we got a northwest about 10 to 20 Anywhere beyond 5, 10, 15 miles, you're going to have some 4 to 8s out there, some chop, uh, inshore a little bit better. Settles down Saturday night, and uh, you know, if you're doing some overnighter stuff into Sunday, things will get much better on Sunday. It really flattens out the ocean nicely. I think a general 2 to 4 will do, so that'll be okay. But again, a little gusty early Saturday, northwest breeze, front coming through, so it'll be a little choppy, especially beyond 5, 10 miles. Inshore should be okay. A little northwest going westerly, lighter Saturday night going into Sunday. Pick of the weekend for the ocean for calm conditions will be Sunday this weekend. I don't see any rain. Doesn't look bad whatsoever. Really nice uh, conditions out there. And not too hot either. 80s to maybe near 90 in the city, but some low to mid 80s generally across the island. So we're looking uh, pretty good there. Let's check that guru, see what uh, we confirm. And certainly that's the case. I like, uh, you know... Saturday, you know, early morning, you've got this little northwest breeze, a little chop coming in. Figured by about 10, 11 a.m., midday afternoon, settles down really nicely going right into early Sunday. Good overnight deal there. And then it looks like maybe later Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, we start to get a little bit of a chop. But overall, it's like a really nice weekend coming up yet again. A little choppy Saturday morning, but the rest should be terrific. Enjoy. Be safe as always. Matt, back to you. It's time for our correspondents to check in. Let's start off with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody, from Montauk this week. Again, another uh, beautiful week out here. Fishing's really starting to come together, and uh, everything's kind of starting to fire on all cylinders. Um, the striped bass, the bluefish, that bite's still really good. Um, plenty of action, whether you're out in the rips trying to uh, live bait or parachute jigs or inside doing light tackle, spinning gear or fly gear. Um, the fluke fishing's really turned on. Paulie Bruno from the Elizabeth II sent me some nice pictures. He says uh, the last week it's really picked up. It's gotten really good. Uh, same with the sea bass. Um, Paulie also sent me some pictures of a tuna. I think this was this morning. He, uh, that's, so the local tuna bite's starting to pick up and everything's going really well. Um, not too many reports from way out on the edge. Uh, little Steven Forsberg, he did, he's doing a 36 hour trip. I think he's gonna stay relatively local, but he should be out towards the canyon. So I hopefully will have a report on that next week. Um, other than that, uh, weather's looking good for the weekend. Enjoy yourselves and talk to you next week. Thank you, Matt. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy, guys. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. Bottom fishing still going pretty strong. We got fluke, sea bass, um, everything in between. That's super exciting. Striped bass seems to kind of have slowed down, but night fishing has been still pretty stellar. Uh, and you got tons of sharks on the bunker pod, so that's super exciting. Even some cobia being reported. And offshore is only going to get stronger. Hopefully, we have some mahi coming in too, so that's exciting. Have a good day. Enjoy the summer, guys. Back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome back, Matt. Really excited to hear all the details from ICAST. Looks like there's a lot of new and exciting stuff that we'll be hearing about from you um, in the coming months. Uh, as to the fishing in between Shinnecock and Mariches, it's those summer doldrums. I predominantly surf cast, and it's kind of a tough go. The predictable bass in the bay and uh, the marshy areas have, have, you know, yet to kind of want to come out and play. Um, you know, those same kind of like, you know, 24 to just about slot size fish that can be pretty dependable at sunset in the lip, you know, both on the open beach and near the jetties. Um, I haven't really had any luck with a buddy of mine that 
has been fishing out by boat in Mauritius Inlet with spots. He's gotten into some bass, but a lot of bluefish that are tearing up those spots. Uh, he did try a flutter spoon, got some pretty nice sized blues. So that could be an idea. Um, off the beach though, there is some shark fishing going on. Now, while um, if you're not part of a tagging program, you can't take them out of the water. Um, definitely exciting catch if you want to, um, you know, Give it a try. A buddy of mine, Steve, who is part of the NOAA t tagging program, along with some of his friends and his girlfriend, Rachel, have gotten some real beasts. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, fluke fishing has picked up. There's been, you know, reports of some double digits, um, both at the mouth of the inlet and out near the Hamptons Artificial Reef. A couple of the other wrecks, um, you know, 70, 80 feet of water have given up some of the bigger fish. So that's good to hear. Sea bass around the wrecks have been there mostly shorts to just about keepers and with that lower bag limit for now uh, a little tough to motivate for a sea bass only trip porgies still plenty of those around and tuna uh Coimbra, like a 10 to 15 mile radius around there uh this past saturday uh some buddies went out there they got into two on the troll uh, i know there's been a lot of jig and pop action for for some guys so if the weather's going to cooperate you know when you have a shot definitely worth the ride out there um so that's kind of about it for now and uh you know, get out there, give it a try. You never know what you're going to catch this weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Dylan Jewell from Mauritius has this report for us. Dylan. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Long Island. Hope everyone's had a chance to get out. Uh, the surf bites definitely, uh, definitely been a grind. Every week we get further into the summer. The water temperature is getting warmer. Um, a lot of fish are pushed off the Block Island. There is fish around, but it's definitely a grind. Um, Bunch of bluefish still around uh, out of Montauk. Uh, on the North Shore, a bunch of bluefish around. Back bays have a bunch of schoolies. Um, the inlets, bunch of trigger fish, bunch of Spanish mackerel. Um, yellowfin bite is red hot. Uh, everything's working. Top water, jigging, trolling, it's all working. The bite's been really, really good. Uh, still getting cobia and tons of sharks out on the bunker pods. Um, that's what I got for you guys this week. I uh, hope everyone has a chance to get out. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle. Hey, folks, we finally got a break in this weather. It's like really cool out today. Beautiful southwest winds. We're looking to be like that for the rest of the week. So that's a great way to rebound after this huge heat wave we had. You know, uh, light winds are fantastic. You can get the family down to the beach. It's good for night fishing, for bass. There's plenty of porgies out there to create great memories. Lots to do. And the water temps, they're warm. So if you want to go swimming, that fits right into there. If you're on the boat, these winds are beautiful for anchoring. They keep you with the tides. Everything's set up. Listen, if you're on the boat, chum is a must. Chum will change your whole experience. It will really bring a lot of fish. And if you just don't feel like it or you don't have a boat and you're getting tired of fishing from the uh, beach, uh, get on one of the local head boats, a party boat or um, one of our talented uh, captains that we have and just have a great time. Fees are always reasonable and with gas and such, you'll find that um, it's still easy to get out there and go fishing. Um, as far as like heat goes, we're into July and we're into August. So what does that mean? That means like fish in the deeper ends are pretty good. But if you're fishing for porgies, porgies don't mind. They come right from the shoreline, right to the deepest parts. Again, so worms, clams, it's great. And it's an underestimated um, fishery. If you're local, a lot of people say, oh, porgy, porgy, tired of fishing for porgy. But wouldn't you know that we get people come as far away as Maryland to take care of this uh, like amazing fishery porgy? Uh, does so much for the industry and uh, worms, clams, head boats, people that make their living off of these uh, porgies. It's a fantastic fishery. So, you know, remember your limits, always know your sizes, legalities, and that's really important and go out and have a great time. And uh, fishing in all this sun, remember you always got to worry about your eyes and your skin. It's a great time to go get a Cal Harbor sun shirt. They've got a, um, what is it called? Uh, UPF of, uh, 50. Plus, and that means that it's going to give you ultraviolet uh, protection. And me, I always wear coasters when I'm on the water. I I wear it by Patrice Local here in Northport. It's a family member, and uh, she does all the, the prescriptions and everything for you and, and really uh, very reasonably priced. So check her out, too, and uh, just watch yourself. Have a great time. Remember, come down to the shop. 
get in our customer loyalty points, join our newsletter, always see what's happening. We send it out every two weeks and uh, you see like discounts, sales, it's a good thing to know. Go to calharbortackle.com. He'll go to the bottom of our new website and um, click on there, sign up for the newsletter. Until next week, I bid you all peace, and tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Zetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island Report. Uh, looks like it's going to be a great weekend coming up for inshore, offshore. Tuna bites pretty good offshore. Actually, it's very good offshore. A lot of cobia on the bunker pods, a lot of sharks on the bunker pods. Uh, some still some and good fluking on the Fire Island Reef. It really got a lot better in the last week. Uh, inside, a little tough with some weed problems, but hopefully that's going to dissipate in a day or two. And there's still, still some good fluke fishing, and now there's blowfish, kingfish, triggerfish, all of that added to the mix. So looks like a great weekend coming up. And uh, you want the latest in info? Come on down to Trophy Tackle, and they'll fill you in on what's going on. Take care, Matt. Talk to you next week. From Oceanside, we have Captain Joey Leggio. Hey Matt, what's going on? So to report out of Deb's Inlet Reynolds Channel area, I'll start off with the crabbing. I've been watching the people over at Bay Park. Uh, the guys have been doing awesome, scooping the crabs off the pylons. Also with the traps, I've been seeing a lot of crabs coming up. In my own backyard, I've been putting the overnighter in and every morning coming up with either 12 to 15 crabs with some true jumbos in there as well. So anyone who loves crab and out there a tasty little treat, I myself love them. Crabbing's been pretty good this year, so I would get out and do that. Great fun time with the kids too. Also the fluke in the bay, still producing. I still seeing some actually some nice large ones coming up too, which is a really good thing to see. Uh, the evening, the bluefish. If you want to catch some bluefish, have some fun. Some nice top water um, hits. Bluefish in the bay. You're going to see the birds working, and you'll see the bay. They're all over the place, especially when you have those flood tides. A lot of action, and that's always a great time. The big news, of course, is the Kobe that's been going on. It's been phenomenal. And this year we're seeing some true, true jumbos. 70 pounders, 65 pounders, 60 pounders. I mean, not nonstop. It's every day these big fish are being weighed in at Scotty's Bay Park Fishing Station. I'm seeing all these fish come in. Uh, my buddy Anthony had a real nice one of 62 and a half pounds caught on a live bunker. Also with the action is the sharks. Tons and tons of sharks. Guys, if you want action, spin gear, it's a lot of fun. You just basically get a bunker, pop a circle in its mouth, cast it back into that school, and hold on, you're going to get a fish. So the action's there. It's great. Over on the reefs, the sea bass and the fluke, it's pretty good. If you guys are going to fish tight to that structure, any of those reefs, Megalista, AB, Rockaway, Hempstead, fish tight to that structure, work those jigs, you're going to produce some really nice fluke. The fluke fishing has definitely picked up in the ocean, and the sea bass are still there too. Also, there's quite a bit of porgies on the spots as well. So again, fun action with the, uh, the wrecks. Uh, other than that, that's basically my report. So guys, get on out there, check it out, have some fun with those sharks. And uh, hopefully, I'll get out there this weekend myself. Chris Landry has the Jamaica Bay report for us. Thanks, Matt. Most of the week, I've been going out with Captain Vinny of Karen Ann Charters trying to get on this bluefin tuna bite. From what he tells me, uh, it's not quite as hot as last year. Maybe it's still a little early. Um, but they are out there. We have found them. We have had shots at them. Uh, but haven't got the bite, but there are guys out there getting a bite. Um, if you use a live bunker, you're gonna get sharked. It's infested. It's barely worth trying to put it out there. Uh, bring a lot of extra rigs because you're gonna get broken off and cut off. So we've been throwing a lot of poppers. I really like these Nomad Chug Norrises. Look at how much water that throws, huge cup. A lot of guys use the Mad Mantis. I prefer these, uh, the four ounce, 180 millimeter giant Chug Norris. Um, Classic is the Ron Z, but I don't think there's sand bills out there from what I've seen. Uh, there's big bunker school, so these hoagies have been doing it. This is uh, the three ounce, six inch version, but the bigger version is, is better. Uh, I think it's a nine inch, six ounce. Um, also went down to Bernie's and got a 20K, Stella, uh, 20K Saragossa because my 14K Stella wasn't going to cut it. That's for yellowfin. I'm new to bluefin tuna. So i uh, really trying to step my game up with this 20K uh, Saragossa, which is much cheaper than the, than the Stellas. We also went to New York Harbor to catch bass. We got on them heavy, doubling up, tripling up. Uh, mainly using these Nicholas spoons, three and a half ounce magnums. Uh, but I also really like these crocodile spoons. They're, they're much heavier. This is a five ounce, and I really like the seven ounce as well. It's right down to the bottom. You can feel the bottom, especially if you got a faster drift. All right, so the bass, uh, they're in New York Harbor. They're not really around uh, Rockaway Beach uh, or uh, Jamaica Bay, only sporadically. 
All right, so I'm really hoping to get this uh, bluefin tuna bite on. So uh, thank you, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Les, we'll be checking with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey there, guys, and checking in here from Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. This week, we've had a nice rooster fish bite creep back after a few slow weeks on the rooster fish front. Many of our boats have been releasing three or four roosters per day. Some really nice fish in the 20 to 30 pound range um, showing really, really nice to see. Offshore, we've had an insane blue marlin bite. My buddy only yesterday raised six blue marlin, which was just fantastic to see in one day. Really, really nice fishing. We've had yellowfin tuna, mahi-mahi, and sailfish offshore as well. We'd love to see you down here in Costa Rica soon, my friends. Back over to you. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.